there's a new exploit been discovered for Linux, which has got the wonderful acronym, or the wonderful name has been applied to it, of Dirty Cow. I've downloaded an implementation that someone put online. I'm not going to tell you where to get it from for obvious reasons as we do the rest of this video. Um, and we'll run it and we'll see that as an unprivileged user, it'll enable me to get root access to the system and then I'll be able to completely destroy it and so on. So I'm running Debian Linux VM. It's not limited just to Debian. Basically any version of Linux that's been released over the last 10 years. So everything pretty much um, running on desktops, but also running on mobile phones such as Android. Uh, contains this exploit. We've now got this running on a virtual machine. What we're going to do is show that the exploit will give us a root shell and then we can do some things that perhaps we shouldn't. So I'm going to first of all show by trying to change the root password that I don't have any permissions more than a normal user. So I can't change the root password. I'm now going to run the exploit. It goes and does its stuff and boom, it's given me a root shell and so I can now if I move the uh, right file back in I can change the root password to lemonade copy the password file back into the right place log out of root I'm now back at the login prompt and I can log in as root with my password as lemonade so I've managed to root my VM all using the dirty cow exploit how would you go about doing that if it wasn't your virtual machine? Would you? So if this wasn't my machine, to use this with the implementation I've got here, you'd need to have an account on the machine. You'd need to be able to log in and do that. Now you could do that, perhaps you're a genuine user on the system, in which case you could then run it and perhaps do something that you shouldn't, or that you perhaps have managed to get hold of a username and password for someone else's machine. You can log in, run this code, and suddenly boom, you've got full access to the machine and you can do all sorts of malicious things. So this is a really serious bug um, that's in Linux. It's been there since about, well, for at least the last 10 years. And in fact, there's evidence that they did try to patch this about 10 years ago, but it caused some other problems and so it's been sitting there. This means that every mobile phone running Android's affected, every Linux machine that's there, every home router, every Internet of Things light bulb that's running Linux, anything that's basically running Linux, until the last few weeks when it was finally patched, this could be applied. And there's other ways you could do it. If you could get the code that does this onto the system using some other exploit, say, running, then you could probably do it in that way. It's a really simple attack. And so if you're running Linux on anything, patch your operating system now. We'll pause while you go and do it, and then we'll continue. So the first thing we need to think about is how Linux manages memory. Now we've looked at how memory works in the computer before and basically the way that a modern system sets up its memory when it's in x86-64 mode or x86 mode, 32-bit mode. 